Welcome to another episode of James Explains, where today we'll take a look at QR codes and how they're formed. QR codes are formed with a 2D array of pixels, which are one colour to represent zero, or a contrasting colour to represent one. They can range from version 1, which is 21 by 21 pixels, which we're looking at in this video, up to version 40, which is 177 by 177 pixels. One of the easiest ways to identify a QR code is the distinctive pattern in the corners. These patterns are the same size and occur on QR codes of any size and are used when reading the QR code to detect the position and rotation of the code. Larger versions also include smaller alignment structures, however the version 1 code we are looking at here does not include any of these. The next structure that occurs on all QR codes is the timing structure. This pattern aligns with the edge of the outer positioning squares and alternates between the two colours of the code at a size of 1 pixel. This allows the reader to confirm the version of this code as well as the timing of the bits along both axes. The next patterns included on QR codes are to denote the format of the data in the code. The first of these is the level of error correction used in the code. This can be low, which can restore roughly 7% of data, medium, which can restore roughly 15%, high, which can restore roughly 30%, or quartile, which is able to restore roughly 50% of the data. The second part of the formatting pattern is the mask that is applied to the data. The mask is used to break up large blocks of identical bits to make the pattern easier to read. There are several different mask patterns that are used in QR codes, and each can be represented by a formula taking in the coordinates of the pixel to determine which pixels are masked. Larger versions of QR codes can also include a format section that specifies the version code that is used, but with a version 1 code like this, the version information is not present. The remaining section in the formatting pattern are error correction for the 5 bits covered so far. All of the formatting data is mirrored in both sections of the formatting pattern. The next part of a QR code is a single bit, which is always represented as 1. This bit is not required for the data and also not required for the formatting information, so it is a relatively unused part of the code. Once we have this added, the remainder of the code is used to represent the stored data. To look at how this data is stored, we first need to look at the pattern that the individual bits are arranged in. The data starts in the lower right corner, starting with the most significant bit of the data. This pattern then follows a zigzag pattern working its way up two columns to the top of the data space. This then continues back down the next two columns, continuing in a right to left order to the bottom of the data space. This pattern continues in the same manner through the remainder of the space, following a general right to left up and down pattern. However, in larger versions with alignment patterns, this pattern does change slightly to navigate around these fixed sections. The first four bits in the data specify the type of encoding the data is stored in. This includes numeric, alphanumeric, kanji, whole bytes, as well as other more complicated structures. Our data will be stored as whole bytes, so we will leave that encoding as the format in our example. A QR code is able to store multiple different data types in the same code, where each section starts with its own specific encoding indicator. The next byte of data stores the message length. Our message will be 14 bytes long, which is represented in binary as 00001110. Using our existing colour scheme of black for 1 and white for 0, we can transpose this data into the message length section of our code. As we now know the length of the message, we can show the 14 bytes that will store this data and start to fill in the bits representing the data we are storing. The first byte we will store is the ASCII capital J, which is represented with the following bits. We can then transpose these into the first byte in our data space. Following this same process, we can fill in the remainder of the data space with the rest of our message and our QR code is starting to fill out more. Following our data, the next four bits in the code are the end of message indicator. This indicator is four zeros, which in our code is represented by four white pixels. Now that the message in our code is complete, we still have 10 remaining bytes of storage space, which is used to store the error correction data of our message. 
QR codes use Read Solomon Error Correction, which is a more complicated concept than we'll cover in this video, but the error correction data for our message looks like this. Now that the complete array of pixels have been filled, we have what looks like a completed QR code, but there is still one more step to follow to finalise it. When scanning a QR code, large sections of identical pixels can cause issues with the timing of the reader, so we want to try to reduce the pixel grouping in our final code. To do this, a mask is applied which inverts pixels according to the pattern of the mask. In generating the code, multiple masks can be tested and the outcome given a score based off the size of the remaining groups. For this code, we are using the mask represented by this formula, which applies the pattern in the highlighted cells. To apply a mask, we invert the bit for all the highlighted pixels, which now leaves us with the final arrangement of the pixels in our code. The last thing we need to make sure this code is readable is a quiet zone of 4 pixels width around the code in the same colour as 0 bits. This ensures the reader is able to distinguish the code from any background noise. Once we have applied this, we have a working QR code that can be decoded by any mobile device that has QR functionality. If you have any other suggestions for future James Explains videos, or any further questions about how QR codes work, leave them in the comments section down below. And as always, thanks for watching.